Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade, and this is How to App on iOS. It's the second show of the day. And today, we're having a late, totally uncensored rant number seven with Pete Jones. How do you do? Hope you're all doing well. If you're watching on Facebook, hello. If you're not, come over to YouTube. You can watch us over here. Or you can watch over to Twitch on twitch.tv slash howtoapponios. Or you can jump over to howtoapponios.com and watch the show in the browser. Let's jump straight in because we've got everyone's favorite iOS garage band man and all-round decent human being and uh, a really good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring on to the show, as usual for the rant, ladies and gentlemen, Pete Johns. Welcome aboard, my friend Pete. Hello. Uh, I'm still, I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of a hoedown. <laughs> Whenever I hear your music, uh, all I want to do is just uh, do some barn dancing. Yeah. See, look, I get so excited, I just kick my desk. Hello, Jay. <laughs> How are you? Hello, everybody. I'm good. How are you going? Oh, apparently, I'm doing well on uh, coffee number three. So, uh, yeah, well, it uh, should be a good show. Yeah. Well, I, I, I only had one because I know what I'm like. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I needed to. I mentioned to you last night that I, I had a my show last night and then I was on Mike's show and, uh, you know, Mike does like to talk. So two hours later, I'm get crawling into bed at nearly midnight and then I'm like, oh, I've got to get up and talk to Jade and her, her awesome community in the morning. So I'm highly caffeinated, folks. So anything could and probably will happen. Perfect. That's why it's totally uncensored. And <laughs> what a perfect way to start because uh, it says your vocals. Can you just give us a test again? I can. There we go. I like to sing. Am I not loud enough? I can. I can give you more. Uh, I can give you more at my end if you like. You can. Well, I, I pumped it up a little bit. It should be about the same level as me. I added some bass in there as well too. Ooh, so give it some bass. Give it the bass, uh, my darling. Pete's audio is coming through his camera. It says it sounds like. Oh, have I? <laughs> <laughs> we we had this last time, didn't we? Uh, audio and video settings. So I don't use Skype very often. Uh, there's my video. Here's my camera. Micro, it is too. Look, see, this is why well your, your community are so good. Thomas. All right, let's let's switch over. Uh, this was just a test to see if you'd realise that my audio is coming through my camera, and uh, all you need to do is change it like there that. There we go. Boom. You go, uh, silky smooth through. Uh, yeah, you, you pay three hundred dollars for a microphone, and then you talk through your webcam. Uh, so there you go. We are done. Well, I thought we tested. It's my fault because I was here like three minutes before start time. So, uh, yeah, this re if it reflects badly on anyone, it's me. You're running a little bit late, but that's all good. And <laughs> it, was, it was Thomas Christ who was the magic man who picked up on it. What a cool. What an amazing admin. The man is. Absolutely. Yes. And the good thing is because we've all done it, you, you know exactly what's happening. You can hear. You can hear that distance and that echo and that reverberation. But uh, I heard somewhere that we all rise together and mistakes make you better. So uh, I'm going to go with it. That is the truth. And, you know, speaking of the community, um, and we'll, we'll talk about this first and then we'll say hello to everybody because that's what I want to start off with today, this amazing iOS music community that we have and that it, you know it's it's a it's a pin drop in the ocean really when you look at so many other youtube channels going on but what i love about it is there is so much support for everybody and and um i think over the second half of this year of what's what's coming up with song timbre and things like that we're gonna mm. see a lot of these people shine which we love to see every day and who without them we wouldn't exist it is true, uh, and yeah, it, it, uh, I've always said it's, it's YouTube, not MeTube or JadeTube or PeteTube. So when we are sharing things on YouTube and, and part of the community as well, and uh, whether it's on Facebook or wherever in the community, it is the people. And I know it's cliche to say, and we're going to sprout some cliches today, but it has been you, the people, that uh, drive the community. And uh, it is, it's a, it's a home recording, it's a mobile recording, uh, at least evolution, if not revolution, that's going on here. And you're all part of it. So it's something new and exciting. And how cool is it to live in the future? I know some things about the future, you might argue, are not particularly awesome, but <laughs> a lot of things actually are right now. And that is the technology and the fact that we walk around with a mobile recording studio in our pockets, which is a bit ridiculous when you think about it. Absolutely. And every waking day I get up and do this and you do this. And I know I, I am incredibly thankful for this amazing community. And um, uh, lately, I think I've had to re rejig the show a little bit because I think I get a little bit lost. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on mm. and uh, kind of lost direction and forgot a little bit that how much the how much the community is important to all of this. Um, and I, yep. I, I do... Um, 
try to say instead of like head over and subbing up and just subbing to people here go and listen to some of the names that you see in the chat if you haven't listened to their music mm. um because there are a lot of people releasing music every single day like thomas christ just dropped a track two hours ago i do believe I, I i saw i was watching your show and then i got distracted because i saw thomas christ that's something new so uh sorry jay but i did go over and listen to thomas's song and then came back to your show so uh i know i, I tell people never to do that you, you can wait if it's a release you can wait but I, I needed to hear what thomas was going on and i love Th thomas's dance moves and he's he got, he got his groove on in his latest song so uh yeah go and check it out if you're not already i know pretty much everyone watching this will be subscribed to thomas and know his work and uh, like what he's got going on but on the off chance that someone is not then uh, go check out Tom. Well, you jumped the gun a bit because I'm going to actually end the show with the song today. So <gasps> screw Ooh. you, Pete. <laughs> oh, no. In, um, I know. I do that all the time. I'm, I'm good at preempting things and just ruining things. They call me Spoiler Pete. Um, you know, it is what it is. Hey, you know. It's, uh, um, so look, yeah, at the end of the day, let's say hello to the folks who are here too because without the hello. community, yeah, let's uh, I'll run down the list. Mark is here. Uh, Kim Hart and Hudson. I'm not getting out the magic mirror today. Uh, Ed oh. B is here. <laughs> Save it for special. You don't want to overdo it, Pete, the magic mirror. True. People True. won't come back. <laughs> uh, Christopher is here also. Uh, who else do we have? <laughs> Thomas Christ, who we already mentioned. Uh, we've got Thomas Galane is here as well too. Um, uh, Audible Video, hello to you. Hello, hello, Patrick Chandler. Hello, 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 Ashley HM. Good to see you as well. Ashley's a friend of mine who's uh, actually been buying people's music. I think she bought uh, Kevin Hart's music and, and bought Russ's music. So thank nice. you, Ashley. That's really cool of you too. Is it Ashley, uh, did she have the tune Transformers? Did I play that on YML last that, week? That, that, was is a, Ashley. that was a jam. That, that was is cool. Ashley. Yeah, so nice. a fr friend of mine uh, from, you know, away from this community. Um, who else is here? Uh, let me see. As I scroll, Joe Glenn is here, and I'm sure Barry's not far behind. Uh, <laughs> Rick Liss. Can, can I put a call out here? Uh, where's Hubs? If someone can ping yeah. Hubs, because I'm wearing his bloody shirt, and he doesn't have the decency to show up here on the show. So uh, I'm going to change. I have a jumper right there. Jade saw me strip before. So if Hubs doesn't show uh, in the scarred. next five minutes... I'm taking off the shirt. I mean, I'm putting something over the shirt because no one wants to. You haven't it. lived until you've watched Pete strip at 9 a.m. <laughs> on Skype. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Somebody, don't tell Georgie. <laughs> Bubba, hello to you. Bubba's here as well. iOS Music Man Lee. Um, who else do we have? I'm trying to keep, get through everyone nice and quickly. Russ. Russ. Angry faces in the chat for Russ. Um, I think we've got most people. Uh, Wolfstone Studio, welcome to you. Scott's here as well. Another one of the great admins from the community here. You're all awesome people. So glad you could join us today, I think. I'm getting to the bottom now. And I think I've covered everything. So that covers, we don't have to do the magic mirror at the end of the show anyway. Ah, oh, good stuff. Hubs, stop. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna lynch you for not being here, Hubs. You're dead, mate. You're no dead worry, to I'm me. Not. I've just taken a screen grab and I'm going to send him a message and just say it's unacceptable that you're not here when I'm uh, pimping your merch. So uh, we'll see. see how it goes. Speaking <laughs> of merch, let's talk about ass gas. Ass gas? Yeah. I'd love to. It's, this is uncensored and we all love a little bit of ass gas. So what is ass gas? Ass gas is the combination of app acquisition syndrome and gear acquisition syndrome. And it's, uh, it's, it's ass gas. And you deal probably a lot more with um, ga uh, with gas on your channel. I deal a little bit more with ass on my channel. Uh, I've always said I'm the I'm the gas guy, and you're the ass girl. Oh God, it's just gone. So this oh, is what man. it's all about, right? This is I knew it would go there. <laughs> Didn't take long. No, of course. So, uh, how do you balance? Um, talking about gear and suggesting gear and stuff like that, where at the same time your mantra is work with the gear that you have. And how challenging is it for you to, to do that? It's really challenging because a lot of people want the quick fix and especially these days and I'm uh, it, I'm probably going to be um, generationally biased here but a lot of younger producers that come from the instant on internet society they didn't they didn't have to slave away over dial up modems like you and I did back in the day 
they just want things now. So they think that the way to get a better recording is not to guts it out and do 50 hours of practice until they get better with the gear they have now. They want to go away and just buy a $400 Shure SM7B and think that suddenly their vocals are going to go from crap to fire overnight. And it just doesn't work that way. So yeah. for me, it's always been about saying, use what you have now that it is. It's about nine. It, the gear is important, but it's only about 10 or 20% of it. And I keep coming back to the fact that an awesome song recorded on an iPhone's microphone is still an awesome song. A crap song recorded in $10,000 worth of gear is still a crap song. It might be a pristinely recorded, nicely sampled song, but it's still a crap song. So working <laughs> on your songwriting and working on your ability to utilize your gear and I honestly believe, like the same with guitars. I know you play guitars and many people in the audience here play guitars. If I didn't have to hack away on my cheap hundred dollar, I don't even know what the brand was, but very cheapo guitar, when I grabbed a tailor, I wouldn't know what I was missing. I wouldn't know why that was so good and what was so good about that. So I think if you go in and you start with something too good, it, it you don't have that understanding of the nuts and bolts of it and you don't appreciate why it's so good and why, I don't know, I, and maybe people will disagree. If you, if you disagree in the chat and you think you should buy expensive instruments or gear straight up to learn on the best, then that maybe that's a, another way to go. But for me, I think grassroots, I learned on a four-track tape recorder, which means I now know the basics of what reverb is. I know that effects that you add on a track and plugins are based on real gear because you used to have to plug in a reverb unit and route your track out, bring it back in. So I don't take any of that stuff for granted, whereas I think these days when it comes to gear, people just take it for granted because they just buy it and it probably transitions well into the plug-in stuff because it's the same sort of thing. They think that I'm just going to go buy Black Hole and suddenly my vocals that were crap are going to sound killer. And uh, there's a certain amount of truth to that because Black well, Hole doesn't make sort. everything <laughs> <laughs> But if, if, you a, if you have a great performance, it's going to make it sound epic, whereas if you just yeah. have an average performance, it might make it passable. So that's, that's my two cents. I totally agree with you too because um, when I first started this iOS journey, I, I uh, you know, was moving around a lot, didn't have a really good home base for a time. You know, I think I've discussed on this channel many times, I was homeless for a period of time. I didn't have all the gear, but I was still making music with my iPad and just this uh, little pre-Sonus, uh, pre-loved uh, audio interface. And I had virtually nothing. I had one guitar and one mic. That's pretty much it. And I was still releasing music of a really high quality. And I think the thing with gear that um you know i know heaps of people throughout my my time playing music who've had all the gear you know the gearheads you roll around to their little home studio and they got rack mounts and everything 80 percent of the time they make fucking shit music <laughs> i don't know what it is <laughs> All the gear. I know what it is. It's, it's that they spend no all idea. time in forums telling people how good their gear is and showing pictures of their setup instead of actually recording and practicing. That's that's why their music's shit. Yeah, the saying is, all the gear, no idea. That's uh, how it goes. <laughs> and I think what's really good, and I think it's interesting with doors as well, so moving into um, apps and stuff like that, to really push the limits of what you already have. Because... Mm. And, and manipulate what you've already got and find tricks and things around it to, to get the best. Like yep. use GarageBand, use all these amazing tips and tricks that you show to get the best out of it. And then when, you know, you've fully moved on and mastered that, you move to Cubasis and you've still got all that, all those tricks that you've had in the past. That's why it's important to uh, not get sucked into the, the ass gas. But in relation yeah. to apps for me, um, I've only been doing this over a, a year. But from looking at last year, I, th I think, and anybody who's followed my channel here, there's been a lot of apps this year that have come out, a real lot of apps. And I think it's going to slow down a little bit for the end of the year, kind of sort of tends to slow down. It's the early part of the year where everything just comes out. And, and I know on my channel, I'm going to be spending more time taking a look at some of the apps through this year already and starting to create things on it because we've got song timber coming up and a whole bunch of things i've already started the nano studio series and the gadget series and i know you're going to do a making music with um uh, garage band on mac tell us a little mac. bit about, about that yeah so i've uh and it's interesting exactly what you say there that it's it's taken me five nearly six years to actually pretty much use everything i can in garageband ios and, and yes i've used cubasis and i've done series on aurea and i've played with garageband mac i made the song uh murdering time a few months ago on garageband mac when i was first first learning it when i first got my mac m1 but 
it, it's taken me that time just to appreciate and to learn all the techniques that I can now implement. So jumping over to the Mac is going to be interesting for me. And the reason that I wanted to do what I'm going to do in the next sort of few weeks, uh, starting early next week after the weekend shows, is that I, I've found that people really resonate when I'm documenting the process of learning. And if I wanted to be egotistical and if I wanted to protect my image, of which I don't really have one, uh, then I would go away and learn everything. And then I'd make a bunch of tutorials saying, here's exactly how you do all this. I know everything that I'm doing. But I found, and the feedback has overwhelmingly said, no, Pete, we want, we want to see you there what's and all, what's and all. And we want to see you struggling through it. We want to know that it's not just us that, have these problems that don't understand where it is, that don't know how to turn the metronome off and on in, in GarageBand or what was it I'll try to do? Zoom in and out. It took me five minutes on a stream the other day to just find the Zoom slider. And then if Scott or Tom or someone <laughs> said, Pete, it's right there in the top right corner. Yeah. So I think some of that and just showing that process really helps folks out because I think it, it makes people feel more comfortable that, hey, everyone goes through this. And I think when you see a really slick tutorial that's well produced, you don't realize that there's five hours of footage and trial and error and broken shit that we've left behind <laughs> and we've just kept in those 10 minutes. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be doing a little bit on the Patreon channel, a little bit here on the channel, and then uh, I will be cutting it down. So uh, I know that there's some people that also say to me, I don't want to watch the two hour live streams to find, to watch you struggle through. So for those people, don't worry, I will then trim it down <laughs> and create five and 10 minutes sort of tutorials just showing what what I've learned and it will become more of a here's what I learned learning garage band so uh, uh Patrick uh Dean Davis uh, <laughs> I'm putting the, the the call out right now you'll probably be getting calls and messages from me on the daily as I struggle through and learn <laughs> sure you'll be fine so speaking of uh gas I had a little bit uh, and purchased Ooh, this thing. Your gas arrived. Yes. Oh, my, it's, it's slightly see-through. I know. It's, <laughs> I, I've asked for my money back because part of the box is missing and uh, they, they're looking into it. Uh, they said they'd possibly send me the box, the missing part of the box. So uh, it's not going to work unless I get that back. So I'm going to just quickly open it up here. This is uh, interesting. So it's pretty cheap too. Like I think US, it's only like a hundred bucks or something. There it is. It's a little. It's a little mixer desk. It's a little mixer. Um, come audio interface. So you've got a, a forty-eight volt phantom microphone in there. Uh, so it's a it's a combo jack as well. Nice. You've got uh, guitars. Uh, so you've got three jacks in there. So for a guitar or bass or stereo instrument. On the yeah. side, you've got two outputs. So you could have two headphones in there. You've got a. a what have we got? I can't even read. Uh, two line ins. You've got a uh, recording line in up here as well. And you have a USB-C at the back. Yeah. So you could use this for streaming, um, having a jam, having a whole bunch of musicians all in together and plugging into it. It's light. It's really light. It's well, very yeah, plasticky. <laughs> So uh, Audible video here says it's like the Roland Go Pro, and I, I have the yeah. Roland Go Mix Pro, which is about two and a half to three times the cost. Um, and look, I I like it, but it's it's no bet. Like you think, oh, I'll get the Roland one because it's going to be like built like a tank. No, unfortunately, some of the Roland gear like that, it's not. It's still the plasticky build quality. It still has the fiddly dials and things. But it's a really handy unit to have something like that. And I'm I'm really keen to to hear and to see what this sounds like. Having USB-C as well is great. So being completely bus powered, obviously if you're using it with iPhone or iPad, you might need a bit of juice. You might need a powered hub or something if yep. it's uh, gonna start pulling the juice. But the the Roland one actually has four, the most it's annoying part is it has four batteries, four AAA batteries uh. that you have to unscrew put them in and then screw back up and that's just for the phantom power and then the rest is powered by bus power so i didn't really understand why they went the half and half route like if it's going to be bus powered just make it all bus powered uh, as opposed to having the battery power but again uh the, yeah the joyo one looks really nice and it's uh, about yeah, less than half the cost plus the, the roland that they, they don't make that anymore they've now got a new one called like the roland streamier nuts off or something i don't know <laughs> something weird some weird name <laughs> Everything's gonna have streaming or like podcast in the title now. Have you noticed that? All the microphones are like, it's a podcast microphone. I'm like, it's just a friggin' dynamic microphone. Oh no, it's a it's a broadcast dynamic. It's like, what does that even mean? It's the same with everything streaming. Like the latest uh, Logitech cameras, uh, they abandoned the whole uh, C920, C922. Now it's the Logitech Stream Pro yeah, or something that. like that. Because everyone's streaming. I'm surprised they don't call it the the Twitch for the boys cam or something. <laughs> 
They've, play him. They've put it really small on here. I, I, you probably can't see it. It says um, Mixer 4 and then incredibly small writing. Cell phone recording live streaming. Yeah, so it's all on there. But um, I'm interested to see what it looks like. I might probably do my opening hour using it. See how yeah, we go. Cool. Um, uh, and uh, look, it's dirt cheap. Um, speaking, before we move on to next topic, um, I'm just going to bring up your gear guide because I can. Oh, thank you. There it is. So there's whoop, whoop. Pete John's gear guide. We're talking about gear. And I think the, the fantastic thing about Pete John's gear guide is that he does try and find stuff that is well within your price range. Where yes. Mine's a little bit more <laughs> extreme. <laughs> Has some more expensive <laughs> stuff, but that's that's the good thing about that. So, um, if you want to look for some gear that's going to suit your budget and not hurt you, definitely that's the place to go. But at the same time, you know, use what you have. We, we both stick by that, you know. Yeah, exactly. Use what you have, and I know that Jade, you do the same now. Anytime I review a bit of gear, and if if I like it, and that's the thing, people say, "Oh, why aren't you trying this or that or this or that?" I probably have. The problem is that if if you don't see it on the gear guide and you don't see me review it, it means I've tried it and I didn't dig it. So I only put stuff on there that either myself or someone that I trust in the community is using. And more more often than not, so for instance, the Persona speakers, the little uh, Eris speakers here, I know that Mark uses them. I know a bunch of people use them because they said they were great. I bought a pair and I tried them and then they were good. So I put them on the gear guide. So that's, that's how they ended up there. Y yours is much more fancy, Jade. Uh, <laughs> no. Why don't you show folks uh, what yours looks like? Uh, you, showed, you showed mine, now show them yours. <laughs> There's mine. So it's a little bit more fancy, but it's no different. You know, just it's, you know, but, but all this stuff here is actually stuff I use every day in my stream. And like if yep. I move my camera, if I spin it over here, uh, just quickly, you can see there's the amps. There's my spark amp and the, the, the pedal here and everything. I've just put up the Joyo amp that I have there, which you can only get in Australia, unfortunately. And there's the Momix, which I've put up. So all this stuff I pretty much use. Let me bring my camera back. Ooh, there we go. Um, again, all the stuff that I use is here. And with both of our gear guides, the you know the money that comes from it, Amazon take it, they they rip a little piece off it, and and we make get a little bit of a commission from it, so kind of thing like that. So yeah, that's the way it works. But yeah, those are gear guides. Let's move on to something uh, like iOS updates because <laughs> they keep coming, mm. and they keep not doing what I want them to do. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what are you unhappy about uh, with the, with the latest iOS update, Jake? <laughs> All right. What I, what I will say is that there was a last update that just came out, so it was fourteen point seven point one, yep. and it was a very small update. And I, I saw some pushback from people in, in across the community on some Facebook pages going, oh, I'm not downloading that. Why would I do that? It's so small. The thing was, if you read what it was about, it was a very critical hack that was in there that people could take control of your phone or your iPad. So probably an update to do. And I know there's a lot of pushback from people saying, hey, my all my apps are working as it is and, and things like that. But if it ain't broke. Yeah. yeah, but then there's um, you got to remember as technology moves forward and new apps come out, they're not running on the older iOS updates. Mm. So people are being forced to move up. So you're going to have to. But yep. that's why we kind of do these shows to discuss what the problems are, what what you could face. Um, what is your opinion on updating? Do you are you always at the bleeding edge on iOS updates? Not the bleeding edge. I'm at the uh, blunt trauma edge. Uh, so I'm slightly behind the bleeding. I don't like to bleed, but I'm the, the, the next one behind. So for instance, I was on 14.7. I, I just checked my iPad now and it said, hey, you can update to 14.7.1. So I hit the button straight away. I don't have automatic updates on because yeah. if I'm in the middle of a critical project. So if I was in the middle, if I was halfway through a song and after this show, I was about to go and finish that song, would I update my iOS just before that session? No. <laughs> I would leave it as it is, but if you uh, if you are between projects, that is a great time to update, iron out any of the bugs that you may find, fix. You may have some apps or some plugins that won't work. You just have to accept that. But yeah, 
for, for the latest GarageBand update, for instance, a lot of people say to me, I don't see it, I don't see it here. And then I'm like, yeah, so what iOS version are you? I'm on a 13.4. And I'm like, yeah, okay, so you're not going to get the latest updates to a lot of apps, including the cool new packs in GarageBand, if you don't have the latest GarageBand, 2.3.11, and at least iOS 14 installed on your iPad or iPhone. So... For that, if you want to, if you want the latest and greatest, and you want to be up to date with things, then you do need. It. If you don't, it's like the old Pro Tools stuff. I know there's a lot of professional studios that are still using like Pro Tools Seven and Pro Tools Eight, yeah. like they haven't upgraded in ten years because those computers just sit there as pure recording computers. But if you're using again, because in our world you use your phone, you use your iPad for everything, for your communications, for all of your social media, and for all of your music. If you're not on the latest version you do have vulnerabilities because you know, as, as Tom was saying here in the chat as well, and you mentioned the zero day vulnerability stuff that you get, the security updates that they push in there. You can say a lot of things about Apple, but in terms of protecting your privacy and trying to secure their platforms, they are super serious about it. And the only real way to make sure that you're up to date is to be up to date. So that's my two cents on that. I don't begrudge anyone who doesn't like to update. Yeah. Our man, Dan Baker, he's got devices still running iOS 10 and 11 because he just loves using the old stuff and he doesn't care about it. And again, if you're not going online and you're not going to be subject to those vulnerabilities, no problem, no harm, no foul. But yeah, do be careful because the latest updates will often protect and help you. Totally. Uh, I just want to say hello to Deep Gravity. It's been a long time since I saw Deep Gravity. Welcome oh, man, back, Cam. my friend. Welcome Good to back. see you, mate. Uh, sorry to hear about your latest, uh, by the way, Jade. <laughs> I know it doesn't affect you, but number six now over there in Melbourne. Uh, <laughs> shout out to all my Victorian friends. Uh, we just did one. We just did a little uh, seven-day lockdown. They, uh, you, you do that yeah. in your sleep. You've, you've done months before. Seven days is nothing. No, look, it's, yeah, but it's a pain in the ass for me because I've got halfway through my new flatmate moving in. Last weekend he oh. moved half his stuff in, and now we have to wait a whole week till he can move in which means that another sucks. week of me having to pay rent by myself it's a fucking oh. <laughs> don't get me started I, whoever that person is who's caused this oh they wouldn't want to meet me in a dark alley i tell you what oh. yeah, it Just... is still baffling with all the things if you don't know here in australia we have some pretty stringent border control and security measures and hotel quarantines for travelers and incoming folks but we've still managed to in just this last sort of three months have about seven different breaches because again people are people and for anyone that's ever been on the internet you know that 99 percent 99.9 of people are awesome and everyone that's watching this show is awesome so i'm not really talking to any of you but the one percent man that one percent that just want to do their thing and, and blah, blah 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 freedom blah 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 my rights it's like yeah what about the rest of us <laughs> yeah you realize you're living in a society and we're having a community here and you kind of can't do things just the way you want them and uh, you know again without getting this is a rant so I'm not going yeah, to yeah, no, too no. much but no, rant rant um, rant rant <laughs> yeah, for freedom of speech and freedom of action does not mean freedom of consequence. So I support freedom of speech. I support freedom of action and your ability to do what you want to do and say what you want to say and feel what you want to feel doesn't mean there's no consequences. So you you, you do you, Sunshine, but uh, don't think that the rest of us are just going to sit back and be happy about uh, some of your decisions. <laughs> and that goes for assholes on, uh, on music forums uh, telling you that you need Pro Tools and you need this and you need that. And if you use iOS, you're a dickhead to, uh, yeah, to people that want to go around and, uh, and impact others. Uh, time in the house or time in the environment. It's not good. Just on that lastly, I've got this. Uh, just before this show, I was just going through my Facebook feed and there's somebody I know who have known for a long time and they've actually put a post up saying, just a question, just asking questions. And as soon as I see that, I think, uh -oh. oh, here we go. Does anybody on my friends list actually know anybody who got COVID and died? Uh... Oh, just so offensive, man, because I have I lost a bunch of people last year, including one of my family members. And just like, what do you do? It's just like, delete. It's a goodbye. Yeah, and, but, and that's you're, it. You're gone. They're in my comments and in yeah, my chat as well. Lost. And yeah, we, we, we chatted about this on Clubhouse during the week. It's like people like to unrelated to anything you're talking about, they'll come in and they'll sprout their, their views and opinions on things and have your views and opinions, but choose your time and choose your place. Like yeah. there, there are conspiracy groups for conspiracy theorists to go and hang out. We don't need to hear about them. We're not going to go into a conspiracy group and say, Hey, there's an awesome new iOS garage band update with 10 brand new packs. Why don't you go check it out? Because it would make no friggin' sense because they're not interested in that. Vice versa, pick your target, know who you need to talk to 
have your little chats with whoever you want to, but keep it to yourself. <laughs> just asking questions. Just asking questions. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, I will finish off on the iOS 14 uh, 0.7.1 thing. There was another thing which why I had to update. Now, I'm surprised because uh, you, you've got an Apple Watch. Anybody who had an Apple Watch Ooh. connected to their phone, it you weren't able to, like with the phone, if you swiped it, with 14.7, if you swiped open your phone, it opens your Apple Watch. That stopped with 14.7. So the update actually fixed that as well. Yeah. And it was such a mess because it, it caused this uh, problem. When I uh, installed 14.7.1, I then had to reinstall the software on my watch as well to make it sync back up. So that was a bit of a disaster, but hey, at least it's fixed. I say, uh, and the other thing too, with any vulnerability stuff, with the 14.7.1, I will finish on this, is that there was a, 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 a zero day on there and it had been released into the wild. It was mm-hmm. already on people's phones and that's why they released it really quickly. So when it's in the wild, man, they've got to do something really quickly or millions of people are going to be affected. And, you know, that just yeah. means more people at the Apple store <laughs> crying a river going, my phone doesn't work. Oh, if, you, if you ever want to have a fun day, well, for, for those that can go to an Apple store, because ours is still open currently, we can mask up and go in there. But yeah, if you want to just browse in there, just, just go and be within earshot of the Genius Bar and uh, listen to some of the things that go on there. It's actually fun and to, not fun. It sounds like I'm being mean fun and cruel here. <laughs> but some of the things that happen and, and then some of the answers that are given by the Apple Genii or Geniuses uh, is, is phenomenally funny. And just hearing what happened to people is like, so I dropped my phone in the toilet. Toilet, now I won't turn on. It's like, well, what do I do? Uh, not drop your phone in the toilet, sir. <laughs> oh, but it said it was waterproof. Yeah. But it was only in there for about a minute. It's like, oh, dude. I paid a thousand dollars for this phone. It should just bloody work if I right. drop it on or, the or toilet. Walking with an iPhone four and go, this has been working fine for twelve years. And last week it just stopped working out of the blue. What's been going on? It's like it's a twelve-year-old phone. I haven't supported it for about the last seven years. So I don't know what to tell you. But it should work. <laughs> hey, trust me, folks. I've met Pete in person and been to his house. He does just go to the Apple store and just sit there and laugh at people. It's one of these weird <laughs> things. He tried to get me to do it, and I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That's weird, man. That's weird. Yeah, that's why I was late when we went to watch Sam Busking. I was, yeah. like, I was just in the Apple store laughing at people. <laughs> no. No, the, the, the sad, it is sad because, and again, I know that we, we and we as the community, we know a lot of things about our devices and we can probably fix things. And I don't even, like, a lot of people will, will contact me and they're like, oh, I did this and then I contacted Apple and then I went to the store and then I called Apple support. I'm like, I don't even bother doing that. I've realized that I trust the actual manufacturer and the company that make my stuff less than I do the community. Because if I have a problem with something Apple, I'll just go on to the iPad musician or the GarageBand users group or create, record, release or the, the Warts group and just say, hey, uh, this Help. happened. And then I'll have like three people say, oh yeah, do this, do this, do this. And I'm like, cool, solved. I reckon if I sat in the Apple Genius Bar waiting for an hour, I'd probably get a lower quality result uh, in terms of advice and uh, spend an awful lot longer doing it. While we're on the subject of Apple, GarageBand for iOS dumped whoop, whoop. the biggest update in a fucking long time. And it Ever. is sweet. It is sweeter than uh, an entire box of Werther's Originals. It's a, it's, it's, it's a Whitman sampler. It's like the one kilogram box of the Whitman sampler. So you get to try everything twice. That's yeah. what it's like. And I know, um, look, uh, it, it's not, there, there aren't in the packs anything for like death metal or anything like that. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of really fantastic packs in there. And it's not just a dump of 808s. Because if it had been another dump of just 808, I, 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 I would have given up. Why do you think they have dumped all of these packs all together, out of the blue? What What do you think is their reasoning behind this? Because I know we're all people are still chomping at the bit for logic is coming. What do you think? What's the reasoning behind oh, this? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. The short answer is I don't know. I've been trying to think because I've, I've been working through the packs. I've done three of them already uh, in terms of done the Watch the Sound pack and the Track Girl pack, actually two of them, and then done a big overview of all of them. And I'm going through each of these packs just going, yeah, what is the what is the logic here in terms <laughs> of the pun? What is the logic in terms of putting <laughs> 10 packs out at once? 
I, I would have thought because the what the wash the sound one makes sense. So he, here's me. If I'm if I'm the uh, if I'm the Apple uh, person going, oh, how do we how do we market this? I would have put out the Lady Gaga and the Dua Lipa live loop grid because if, if you're not up to date, by the way, they put out two live loops remix sessions and eight sound packs, traditional sound library packs. So I would have put out those two, the Dua Lipa and the Lady Gaga, because they are really good. My kids love them. They've been sitting down. They're, they're listening to actual songs that they know that are real. They are. There's, there's Dua Lipa and Lady Gaga. So they can remix in live loops. They can learn how to create music. They can learn how things are put together. So I would have put those out. And then I would have put the Watch the Sound pack out as well, because that's related to their Apple TV show with Mark Ronson. So those three at once. And then I would have teased the fact that we're dropping a pack every week or a pack every two weeks for the next, for the rest of the year. We've got a whole bunch coming and then build up to it and saying, who's going to be this week's pack? Boom, it's take a day trip. So that's probably the way I'd go. But then again, what do I know? Because Apple know more things than I do. But I do like the fact that they just went, nut, nah, here it is. Boom, it's all there. And I know we've talked about it and I've talked about it on my channel, but it, it really does. For, for those that were sitting back and on the fence about, hey, GarageBand's really just a toy, to me, this legitimizes it. When you see that there are eight different producers there, including Mark Ronson, who's probably one of the, the most famous DJs and producers of music in the world, this is legitimizing GarageBand. This is saying to anyone who's doubted, yes, you can make professional sounding beats and tracks and songs on your iPhone or your iPad because all these people are doing it. Not only that, they've got a bunch of sounds that you can now use in your projects. So that's that's my uh, my my two cents on that one. I, I still think they probably got, would have got more traction if they did a little slower, like instead of the one big bang. But hey, uh, under promise and over deliver is kind of Apple's vibe, isn't it? They they don't want to tell you what they're doing. They just want it to happen and they want to surprise and delight you. So yeah, I'm, I'm well and truly surprised and delighted. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, you know, for those of you who are thinking, oh, it's just a bunch of loops and stuff, there's a whole lot more. And uh, I think what excited me is the extra, like, vocal. Um, you know, we've got more That's vocal cool. settings and stuff like that, more, more vocal presets. Fantastic. You know, and I know there's a lot of people out there going, oh, and I, I'm guilty of it too, saying, but I want some more acoustic guitar sounds. I, want, I, I do want those kind of things. I'd love some more bass sounds. Some, some, you know, because there's what, there's four or five, is that all, all there yeah. is? Yep. But there's the at, at the moment, it's not like there isn't a shortage of other apps that can fulfill that need until then. So that's a good thing. I think the reasoning behind this is they're letting us know that there's love still behind this. They Ooh. haven't forgotten us. And I'm yep. sure, uh, like, I send so many emails for bug reports and stuff like that. I probably hate people like me. And the forums are full of people bitching about stuff. It gives me hope that... And makes me, like, not think about logic so much. Because yep. who knows? This could actually be leading to a, a master volume. Uh, that is that is all all we need is master volume even if we don't have a master volume there's ways around that but the yeah. auto normalization we need to like if, if I'm, I'm if i was starting a petition about one thing in GarageBand ios it was give us that option because it would be so simple because we have it. if you don't know what we're talking about in GarageBand on mac there is an option to turn on or off auto normalization what auto normalization does is if you've got a track that's lower than zero db it will increase the max volume up to zero db problem is though if you've got a track that's above zero dB, it not only normalizes it, it limits it. So it basically adds a brick wall limiter to your mix. So if you are mixing, if you, and this is why I say, number one rule of GarageBand is turn it down. Because too many people just leave all their tracks at the default volume, like you've got there, and it, it overloads it. You can see that if the top meter there, it's gonna start jumping into the yellow and red. As soon as you export that, people are like, why does it sound different? It's because it's over zero dB and it's turning it down. You get pumping, you get distortion. It sounds like hot garbage. So if we had that option, it would then tell you, it would say, hey, you're over zero dB. If you don't turn it down, it's going to sound like crap if you have that setting off. So just having that one setting, I think, is the would be the game changer. And then your workflow from GarageBand iOS through to GarageBand Max through to Logic would actually make a whole lot of sense. And it would just be this beautiful ecosystem of love and joy. Yeah, look, I, I would be completely happy if Apple decided on this 
that, you know what, let's not bring out Logic. Let's just incorporate some of the features of Logic into GarageBand and keep it simple. And clearly, by these names that they've used with these packs that they're bringing in, they're trying to reach an audience and go, look at these people who are using it. I just want to answer Bubba's question. So in relation Mm. to the copyright, all of the packs apart from the actual uh, songs, the Lady Gaga song, and uh, who's the other artist? Dua Lipa. Yeah, so these two at the top here, let me bring it back up on the screen. So these two at the top here, these are actually full tracks of these songs that are available by these artists that you can remix. But all of the packs all down here, apart from the Lady Gaga and the Julepa one, these are all copyright free, all that same as usual, business as usual. So don't be afraid of that. But it does give me hope that um, I think even myself, I'm guilty of it, Pete. You know, I, I've fallen into this, but I want logic, but I want logic. But do I, do I really yeah. want logic? I, I'm not sure anymore because after doing the a uh, couple of um, C- series recently, the one on I did on Nano Studio 2 and then I did a call gadget, I was by the end of both of those, don't get me wrong, both fantastic apps and it was really fun making music and I will continue to use those doors. But I was just longing to jump into GarageBand and go, oh, it's like an old pair of slippers, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I honestly think, and yeah, this is probably going to surprise some people, but maybe not, that if GarageBand wasn't called GarageBand, we wouldn't want Logic. We want Logic because Logic is the professional door and GarageBand is the consumer door. Yep. And people that are professional music creators don't want the label of creating something in GarageBand. And I think, I honestly think the more I think about it, the more I research this, the more I think it is actually an image problem yep. as opposed to an actual functionality problem. And you're right. If GarageBand just tweak those couple of little things, give us a master fader, reduce the auto normalization, maybe give us some extra tracks. Maybe that's the one other thing that they could do. Cause I know some people hit that 32 track limit yep. and maybe give us mono tracks as well as stereo tracks. Cause that's the other frustrating thing about GarageBand iOS is every track is stereo. You can't even force it to be mono without exporting and re-importing as a mono file. So, there's a few little tweaks there that might fix things. but And, and as I'm learning, this will be interesting, because as I'm learning GarageBand Mac, I'm realizing that so many of those features would just not make sense in iOS. They would clutter up and complicate. You think about an 11-inch screen or, heaven forbid, a 9-inch or a 4- or 5-inch touchscreen, you're trying to fit all that stuff on there. Even on my 32-inch and 27-inch monitors using GarageBand Mac, I find things quite small and fiddly and hard to adjust. Can you imagine trying to use that parametric EQ with all those adjustments you have on your 9-inch iPad or your 11-inch iPad? It's not really designed for that. And I think that's probably the thing that a lot of us are missing with this. And I mean, I, I got excited when the M1 came out on the Mac because I thought they would throw all of the iOS apps over onto the Mac. That didn't happen for obvious reasons. It's not a touchscreen. Going the other way, when the M1 iPad came out, everyone got all excited because all of the Mac apps are suddenly going to come to iPad. It is a touchscreen, so it doesn't work that way. So I think despite how excited we are, despite how disappointed the vast majority of us that kind of thought we wanted Logic on an iPad are going to be, uh, the, the longer it goes on, the less I think that that in particular is going to happen. But that's, that's my two cents. And that's my rant because it is the rant. Yeah, and, and, and on that too, just let's touch on video as well because LumaFusion, as we know, just got this massive update. I've done a yep. couple of shows on it. And this is interesting because a lot of people want Final Cut Pro. But if you look at the LumaFusion update, the image stabilization that they have included in LumaFusion is the yep. exact same image stabilization in Final Cut Pro. Yep. That's telling. It's a, it's an interesting thing. Is it worth Apple actually porting Logic to the iPad when they're already investing money into, uh, I'm sure when uh, the uh, new iPhone's released or whenever their next keynote is, we're going to see them talking about LumaFusion. Luma Touch have five years experience in building a video editor with a touch screen. Why, why would Apple want to invest time, money and effort into trying to get Final Cut Pro that has been honed over, how long has Final Cut been around? Close to 10 yeah, years, or probably longer. Uh, why would they want to spend their time and their development money and energy trying to make that, turn that, convert that into a touch screen experience when it is built around people that know, 
if you've edited on Final Cut Pro or on Premiere Pro, could you imagine? You'd need a keyboard for starters because if you're a pro level editor, you use keyboard shortcuts all the time for your editing workflow, and you use the mouse to very do very finite adjustments. And touch screens are great for a lot of things. What they struggle with a little bit is those real finite adjustments. Luma Touch and who are the makers of Luma Fusion have worked out a way around that with different zoom levels, with the ability to tweak things and to change things, and to use those sliders to just move things around. So they've over time develop this infrastructure that works and yeah if you saw the wwdc in the last basically the last two updates uh terry who's like the the ceo of good Good old terry good old terry uh she she's been there like you see her face she's the blonde lady from luba touch and people now recognize her and yeah i wait for the the next big announcement to come out about something else ios related luma fusion are going to be deeply integrated in there apple have apple don't just do things by random like if you ever look at something that happens and you see a developer that's somewhere near apple it's not because they just picked them out of a hat and went ah you're doing a thing yeah no they've, they've got they've, they've got support so luma, luma touch would be very very closely working and I, I would not even be surprised if in the future that apple actually acquire that like they did with shortcuts with yep. the uh, the app the, the app shortcuts that used to be called workflow they acquired it and they built it in I think that Luma, Luma Fusion could actually become part of the uh, the Apple suite of things like iMovie. If you want to do basic editing and if you want something else, you buy Luma Fusion. I don't know, but it, guaranteed it's that's happening. Happen. I reckon that's yeah. happening big time. They're so in with Apple. Isn't it funny? Just as you were saying that, Thomas Christ wrote, Jaden Pete, do you think Luma Fusion might eventually be bought by Apple? <laughs> as exactly as you said it. Yeah. Oh, God, we're all connected. We're all right. Uh, well, yeah. Well, we've seen it before. We've we've seen this play before. We've seen. Like this is recently, we're using Skype right now. Skype's owned by Microsoft. So, and that you, you think if you ten years ago, if you went, Microsoft are going to buy a video conferencing app, uh, like a video <laughs> conferencing service, Skype, you'd be like, why? I'm still laughing. Why now. would they do that? That makes no sense. It's not aligned with their business model, but it makes sense now because everyone uses Skype, and it's the same with all of this stuff. Why would Apple buy Beats by Dre and then integrate them into their Apple? Well, because they wanted to make headphones like that, and if Apple don't want to spend the time and the energy implementing something new, they will buy the technology, they'll buy the IP from somewhere else, and that's exactly what they've done time and time again, and what every company has done time and time again so yeah i would i would not be surprised at all my jaw would remain off the floor if i found out in six months time that luma touch have been acquired by apple yeah and thomas just wrote here that's how logic uh was started as well yes. i still have on my laptop that i'm streaming from here logic 5.5 the last version of logic on pc before apple acquired it why do yep. I have that still on my PC? Because I have some old albums that I recorded back in the yep. day that I still have the masters for. Strangely, it still works on Windows 10. I don't know how. But then so does Cool Edit. So go, <laughs> go figure. Cool Edit will never stop working, I, I think. Talking about oh, doors, because we're on doors now. Mm. Um, doors. I, I'm going to kick this off. Use the door that works for you. And you know what? Oh. If a par- portion of it doesn't work for you, Open it up in another door and finish it off in there. I did my gadget um, uh, series just last week. And look, gadget's sick. It was fantastic for making really polished music very easily. It's a little bit interesting to get used to the, the tracks going down. But once you get through that. But while I was doing that series, I got to day three and was like, Hang on, the vocals are really hard to do. This, this, and this is going to waste my time. And I was stressing out, going, people are going to think in the show that I've I've completely fucked over the brief and 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 cheated and moved over to another door. No, I had to move it across into GarageBand. And thankfully, Gadget Two makes it super easy to export your stems really easy beautifully so i was able to put yep. them into garage band and i saved a crap load of time just doing the vocals in a garage band and it helped the song yeah seriously i use a multitude of doors i i use cubasis i use nano studio 2 gadget garage band aurea pro i have them all you don't need to and the reason is because there's shortcomings for all of them yeah there is no one that is perfect and there never will be even if logic comes out there'll still be issues. There'll still be something that it doesn't do that people want. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've been a broker record on this for years, uh, but 
every time and I, I i get baited and people try to try to troll me and i don't feed trolls so uh they they go away pretty quickly but i think people want me to be defensive they want me to tell you that you should use garage band they want me to say that you should never use anything else and that garage band can do everything for everyone it can't it's the same as music not everyone's going to like every type of music. And if you try to please everyone, you'll end up pleasing no one. And it's the same with the DAW. I know people that love Reaper because it is super duper customizable. And I thought I would love it for that reason. So Reaper's a, a door that you can use on your Mac or your PC, made by the guys that did Winamp back in the day. So it's yeah, super cool, has heaps of features, totally upgradable, customizable. You can change everything about it. That sounds good on the surface until you realize that sometimes that gets in the way of you actually creating and recording music yeah. and there's other people that swear by pro tools because they grew up they, they went to recording engineer school and they learnt pro tools they know every keyboard shortcut they know it by the back of the hand would i suggest any one of those switch over to logic or switch to garage band if they're using it and creating good music heck no use exactly what you said before use whatever daw use whatever software use whatever hardware you want to make you want to use that's going to help you make the best music do you, I, i've watched um the entire Hans Zimmer. So Hans Zimmer, a, a composer, uh, writes a lot of musical scores for movies. Really cool dude. I, I watched his entire masterclass recently. I think he mentioned very, very briefly for like about five seconds that he uses Logic. But it wasn't about that at all. And he didn't say that people should be using what. And he actually made the point. He's like, I, I use all this gear and I have all these fancy flashing lights and stuff. But to be honest, I do more composing now on my laptop than I do in this studio. And he said, then the next generation of people are just going to be doing it on their phones and iPads. And that's that's probably arguably the best music creator, composer uh, of our generation saying this is what's going to happen. Uh, so any, anytime someone tells you, and uh, again, I rant about this a lot, but it is the rant. Anytime someone makes a definitive statement about what you should and shouldn't do, and it's related to a creative field, you can basically tell them to take a running jump because if they don't use the words in my opinion or in my experience at the start of a statement, you can basically think it's worthless because so much is subjective. 99% of what you do in the studio is subjective. Apart from don't clip your master bus and distort the crap out of your song, there's really nothing else that you can do wrong. And even that, I've heard songs now where they're deliberately digital clipping on the yeah. master bus to, to make a particular it's cool. Effect. Exactly. The kids are loving it. So you can't even say that anymore. So yeah, again, listen, if, if someone's giving you advice and they don't say that this is my opinion or my experience and they make it a definitive statement, it's probably more about them and their insecurities and they've probably piled 40 grand into their setup and don't want to admit that someone could possibly make good music with any setup that's not exactly what they use. So yeah, take it, take it with a grain shaker or a entire salt flat of salt. Yeah, taking in huge helping of salt. Hello, Brad Example. Mound. Hello, James Kimball, Brad Example, and I think uh, Gary Hubs is oh, here as well. Look who, Hubs. look who the cat dragged in. Only took him 48 Late minutes to comer. actually come and show his face. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Brian, Brian uh, Ketterin, is, uh, is that how I say? Ketterin, yeah. Hey, and just on that, uh, and you know I'm a rule breaker, so I'm going to play a bit of this with audio. I don't really care. This I saw this the other day and laughed my ass off. This sums up for me about doors. And uh, Let's go over it. Just give it a little oh, bit of volume there, man. Hal Glenfricker here, back again with Just a second. another exciting video. <laughs> Today, we're going to go over 13 reasons why Pro Tools is just plain better than that yucky, stinky, smelly excuse for a digital audio workstation, Reaper. Now, before we get started, I have to be completely transparent here. I'll just show the I've first one. Hang on. Reaper for many years now. Back let me let day, me forward it to the next chapter. The first the first reason Studio. is it was written in machine language and it was faster than the spread than the spreading of COVID. Go, first I one. Trump to begin my journey with the best DAW in the world, Pro Tools. <laughs> the first reason is. <laughs> we'll turn down the volume just for the music. There should be okay. Number one, the name is cooler. Plus, it has Pro in it, like all great things. <laughs> Of course, Pro Tools is better than Reaper. It has the word Pro in it, and as we all know, if something has the word Pro in it, then it's the top of the line and the best on the market. Putting the word Pro next to your product automatically makes it better. Exactly. That's why prostitutes exist. Boom oh, Tish. Where's, where's Peppy? <laughs> I can't do Peppy today when I'm doing interviews. I've got a bell now, so... Ding! I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you one of those whenever you uh, whenever we say something funny. But look, I laughed my ass off through that because everything you said was absolutely spot on, and it just equaled. Do what makes you happy, man. That's a, that's the thing at the end of the day. Uh, that's yeah. going to bring me over to uh, stepping out of your comfort zone. 
I think yeah. it's something we all should be doing. And it's something mm. I try and do every single day on my channel. I, I look at apps. Sometimes I don't even get a good chance to work out how to use the apps and, and uh, are flying a bit blindly. I think stepping out of our comfort zone is a really good thing because you may step in dog shit sometimes, but you know what? You can always clean it off. Yeah. Yeah, pl playing it so like, look, I'm Mr. Conservative, Mr. Sit on the Fence, Mr. Play It Safe in many facets of my life. So people would look at me and go, oh, yeah, what do you know about uh, stepping out of your comfort zone? But in the last, well, the last six years since I've been doing this, uh, that has been a big out of my comfort zone thing. I was a terrible public speaker. I hated speaking in front of people. But I started doing it because I knew that once I got past the hesitancy and the, the heart pumping and the feeling like I'm about to puke every time I got in front of people in public or in front of a camera, that I'd actually enjoy it. So I wanted to actually do that. And I think that's the key thing. And I've talked about it before that getting out of your comfort zone doesn't have to be jumping off the high dive board. So the Olympics is just going on at the moment. If you wanted to learn how to dive, Segway. you're not going to go up to the 10 meter platform and just bloody belly flop your way down there. Cause it's going to end badly. But if you went onto the one meter springboard and just sat there on your ass and just went, wee and jumped in, you'd be like, Hey, that's fun. Maybe I'll go to the five meter one and just jump off that. And then you work your way up. So you can take baby steps. If you're like me and you're like, Oh, I can't possibly think about the idea of ever sharing my music. Don't share it with the world. Don't share it with a bunch of trolls on a forum full of uh, people with too much time on their hands. Share it to me or Jade. Share yeah. it to a small, close-knit group of friends. Share it to other creators. Go to the Create, Record, Release, or the, or the Warts group on Facebook and share it there. And then you'll build your confidence over time because it does two things. It builds your confidence of what you're doing that you can actually do it. And it also makes you realize that you, there are other, other people doing it as well. And you will develop more of a thick skin and realize that when people do give you, because the majority of the reason people don't get out of their comfort zone is more to do with what other people will think than what they think of themselves. So when I, when I go out for a walk, I like to play Pokemon Go. And people might think you're a 42 year old man, grow up. Why would you like to do that? Why do you want? Oh, right, exactly. Why do you want to play Pokemon Go? And I'm like, because it gives me something to do while I'm walking around. I walk for about two, three hours a day, so yeah, I get yeah. to go. Oh, look, there's a shiny little Pokemon monster there. Um, but yeah, would I admit that in most companies like back did. in the day? No, I'd be like, <laughs> people will laugh at me. People will mock me. But do I care now? No. So again, uh, the more you get out of your comfort zone, the more you realise that. You can do what you want, not not for a, oh, man, I do what I want. No one can tell me what to what, what to do. It's nothing about that. It's about I do what I want because I'm comfortable in my own skin and I like what I like and people can like what I like and like me for it or not like me for it and that really doesn't make any difference. But what you'll find, here's the secret, you'll find that there's a little community, there's a little tribe, there's a little group of people that actually do like what you like and they'll, they'll sneak up to you from the side and be like, oh, man, you play, you play Pokemon. Oh, I play Pokemon too, but I just don't want to tell anyone because how embarrassing, man, right? Like we're grown men and we're playing Pokemon. So whatever it is you do, that's just my example, but whatever it is you do, don't be afraid to fly your freak flag loud and proud. That's my two cents. Yep. As Cartman would say, see you guys, I'm getting him. <laughs> Exactly that. I do it at I respect my authority. Hello to some other people who are coming. Timothy, hello to you. Uh, someone else who I might have missed. Uh, I thought I saw the name. Now I can't see. Let me scroll up quickly because it is important to say hello to people and, and make sure everybody feels welcome because we've circled back to round two community. Uh, James Kimball as well. Derek Smith, hello to you, my friend. Uh, so don't, don't uh, take my Cartman comments. Uh, are you okay to go a little bit over? Yeah, yeah, I am. I, I, I gave myself a half hour buffer because I, I mean, you, you know Mike from Creative Source, but I do know you like a chat. And, yeah, uh, I, knew we'd, I knew we'd rant and we'd go off, so I got I got thirty more minutes that we can uh, we can we can extend, go into overtime. Good, because you know we're not too far from the end. But um, so stepping out of your comfort zone, uh, and what say you? Yeah, look, um, I I, do, I try to do it here every day. Like uh, the gadget thing I did last week was incredibly out of my comfort zone, and I, I'll be honest, I released that song. Not not my best song. It's interesting seeing people like say they like it and stuff, but within myself, not my best. I, I, I know I could do a lot better with a lot more time and stuff. But hey, that's okay. Because I understand the circumstances that it was made in. And I, I already was putting more pressure on myself than I, than I need be. And just like I said before, letting go and going and doing those vocals in GarageBand was me going, it's okay. Don't stress. It's all good. You know, it is what it is. And I know the next kind of thing I do for Kindercore 
we'll have more of a direction. What was really hard about it, not only was I using a door that I'd never used before, had no idea what was going on, I was creating a brand new musical project that had no vision for what it was actually meant to be about and writing a song about, fuck knows, I had no idea what it was going to be. So it was, I was really, I I threw myself under the bus, seriously. And it's good to do that. You know, the deep end sometimes is the best place to swim as long as there's somebody around holding your hand. And I use the community for that having yep. people watch and be there was that hand-holding experience. And hello to Metalhead Hippie who's just joined us. Can we boom. all... Boom. Everybody give a Metalhead Hippie a boom. Can we get a boom in the chat for Metalhead Hippie? Mm. If I don't see a million explosions, I'm going to lose <laughs> my shit. Boom, 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 boom. Shake boom, the room. Boom, 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 boom. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> That, was that was that boom? Yeah, that was a, was that John Lee Hooker? The boom 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 boom. Do, 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 do. Someone someone so. needs to do a cover of that tune and uh, play. I, I'll do it. I'll take it on, hippie. Let's. Uh, I'll I'll cover. Uh, Mix it in with your lucky King. cat song. <laughs> your lucky B. B. yeah, my lucky yeah, my lucky cat. Is it boom boom by BB King? Sorry, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. Sorry. Go go on, Jade. There's also boom boom boom. boom. Let's go back go to back my to room. My you room. can do that one. Uh, and uh, boom 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 boom. Uh, yeah, there's lots of boom songs. I know. Maybe we could do a boom there's, medley. There's the Boomtown Rats. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's we've got all boom. of um, and then there's here comes the boom. Here comes the boom. <laughs> ready or not? So. uh a boom medley has to be somewhere in our future. See, Hippie comes in and the whole show gets derailed and turned into a boom <laughs> session. Look what you've done, Hippie. <laughs> and, he, he, I'm excited. And, I, and I will get a haircut because it it's getting a little bit long on top. Oh, so you you wild try. man, Pete. <laughs> might, might go the mohawk this time, what do you reckon? While I, while I still have some, I'll, uh, I'll shave the sides and get like a nice mohawk and then uh, colour it yellow. I reckon yellow get some mohawk. dreadlocks. Hey, I know head. a great place in Adelaide. <laughs> Uh, I could buy a short SM7B for the price of your spend on your dreadlocks, so uh, no you know, I'll pass on that. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, talking about like uh, stepping out of your comfort zone because it is That's a good right. thing, and and I encourage you, and you're all going to get the chance to do that because uh, I'm, I will circle back. Reinvention, reinvention is something I've been dealing with lately because I think over the last few months I've lost a little bit of direction on my channel here. And I Mm -hmm. think it's a really good thing if you're able to step outside of your comfort zone, sometimes it's even good to take an extra step back and have a look from the outside of what's going on. What is, what are the things you're trying to achieve? What where what were you trying to achieve originally when you started this uh, project? Whatever it is, be it art, be it yep. pottery, be it doing a YouTube channel, making a song. And I've had to do that recently because I've had to deal with illness and I had to disappear from the channel. I've got had a lot of personal stuff going on with losing someone out of my house and paying all this rent and living by myself. So there's been a lot of stress going on. Um, and I've, the last week or two, I've really had to take a step back and try and reinvent. Not so much reinvent, but remember, where was I going originally with this channel? And I realized over the last few months, I hadn't even said we all rise together for mm. a long time. And that that has been the core of this. And not only having a, a thing up on my TV saying, get out of bed each day, but remembering that we are all in this together and watching everybody rise around what I'm trying to do. And hopefully that lifts me as well. And I'd really forgotten that. So this week I've really tried to make, uh, to realign everything, reset the, the button, the reset switch and get back to that because that's the most important thing. And I think that's possibly why some of the joy for me out of this was starting to disappear. Um, yeah. What do you think about reinvention? Do you do you uh, you know t- often yeah. take a look in, at what's going on and take a step back? I do, and the, the word you use there of joy and call it joy, call it happiness, call it fulfillment. I don't care what what uh, adjective you use, but that is so important. And I I've been playing around with these new packs, and anyone that's seen me do these. I say at least once per show, uh, you know, we're, we're playing around with this. We're having some fun. We're just experimenting. We'll see what happens because I think it's really easy. I've, I've seen a lot of people that in our space go down this this track where as soon as it goes from you creating music for your own personal enjoyment and for fun to, to try and teach people or to try and make a business around it, whatever it is, 
you can just get into a rinse repeat mentality and i actually really love one of the best things about having kids is i get to go into their school and see the sort of things they have up in their room because i think i think we need a lot of these rules that we need a lot of these guidelines that they have in classrooms for our online communities and for ourselves because at, at my kids school one of their key principles is have a reason for the things you do and say yeah and i think that that's really powerful i think so often we get caught in this loop of doing things and exactly as you said it's not until you stop and you look inwardly and you reflect on why am i actually doing this i think a lot of people make music because they've always made music and they're like i'm a metal guy i need to make metal and you're like hey have you ever made a hip-hop beat and they're like oh, i'm not a hip-hop guy i'm a metal guy i'll never make hip-hop you like many years why don't ago. you try it like you might have fun you might enjoy it so I think the, the idea of reinventing is it's like, why, why do you like metal? I was like, oh, because I was always into metal when I was a teenager. Yeah, you're 47 now. Um, why are you into metal now? Like, are you, you can't try something different. You might love it. You might find that classical music is really cool for your demeanor because your testosterone is reduced as you get older. So you might actually like more mellow tunes. If you don't try it, you won't know. And uh, if you don't have a reason for doing something. And if your reason is just bollocksing around and having fun that's cool too when i say reason it doesn't mean that you have to have this deep-seated goal and mission and fulfillment you could just say i really like playing video games because it takes my mind off the bullshit that goes on in the world so i'm going to sit and play two hours of video games and afterwards i'm going to feel better but if instead you're doing something that for two hours makes you feel worse than you feel before you started you got to take a long hard look at yourself and wonder why you're doing that thing yeah um <laughs> Testosterone. If you're struggling with testosterone, you can always buy that uh, stuff I see on American television. Man boosting uh, testosterone powder. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You've there, got me oh, it's, it's weird. There's, there's, um, I can't remember his name, but there's, <laughs> there's a, a, a contrapreneur. If, if you've never checked out Mike Winnett, uh, he does this uh, series on contrapreneurs and he plays contrapreneur bingo, where a contrapreneur is basically those people you see online where they're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a webinar. And the whole webinar is them selling you their course. And then at the end, they're like, oh, this is $1,497 worth of value. We're giving it to you for only $197 for the first 100 people you've got to buy now. <laughs> It's always got to end in a seven. Uh, but yeah, there's one of those dudes that's just, his claim to fame is that his testosterone level is like 10 times higher than anyone else in the world. It's just like, ah, oh, I got so much testosterone. And he yells and screams at people. And he, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, I'm really proud that, uh, you know, a bunch of people that did my course have ended up having nervous breakdowns because they couldn't handle it because they didn't have <laughs> enough testosterone like me. And I'm like, wow, there are people that are legitimately out there that think this is an okay way to, to act and behave. And it's just, it's, it's so weird. So I don't mean to go off on that weird rant, but yeah, ch check out Mike Winnett and his Contrapreneur series because it's absolutely hilarious. Thank you, Metalhead Hippie, for the kind super chat as always. Oh, Thank you nice. very much. That's so nice here. Boom. Boom. He's a boom. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bit of Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff just for doom, uh, which is like, boom, boom, shake, shake the room, boom, boom, shake, shake the room, boom, boom, shake, shake the room, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> so you're you ready for me yet? Turn it up, Prince. So, sorry, <laughs> I, I know that I know that some people were singing along with me. Uh, oh, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be one. It wouldn't be a show this without you being able to get a cool sample that you can then use uh, in in future shows. Yeah. So there you go. Now, whenever you want to, uh, you can just have me dancing and singing "Boom Shake the Room." I won't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you'd never get a YouTuber dancing in a weird way and uh, use another nah. channel, Jade. <laughs> Not going to happen. Never, never. Uh, what do you think? I'm some kind of fool? <laughs> you know, I, I'm way above that, Peter. I've got a magic mirror. What have you got? <laughs> Oh, I've got a Hubs t-shirt. So there you go. Uh, sorry. So, so Hubs said that escalated quickly. Well, yeah, we're on your t-shirt, Hubs. So feel free to to clip that and use it as a promo for your shirt. So this is what happens if you buy a Hubs shirt. You end up doing this. You know, I'll tell you, the, just going back to community and stuff, there is a reason why I added that magic mirror. A, for a bit of a laugh, right? Because it's fun to mix things up and add something new in. But B... There's always these videos, right? These live streams, whatever it is, iOS community, everything, where you say hello to everybody at the start, but I never see videos of people saying goodbye. Goodbye. You know, and you're Australian, you grew up with a romper room. If anyone's America, they had romper room as well. And at the end of the show, the lady who ran romper room for all the kids, she'd look into the magic mirror and say goodbye. And I remember being a kid each day sitting there going, oh, hopefully Miss Helena is going to say my name. And each day she wouldn't, I'd go, you fucking bitch. <laughs> so that's why I've added it 
to the show. It's a special thing to reward the community. <laughs> See, back then there were only about 30 names and uh, back in the 80s yeah. everyone was, was white and generic here in Australia. So, uh, yeah, it was just like as long as they said Jane and John and Peter and Andrew, then uh, that was 80% of the kids watching, so you were fine. <laughs> so getting back to where we were, hey, you know what? With re- re- reinvention, it's yes. okay to step away. That's my thing that I'm, I'm oh, using yeah. now as a mantra because I took a week off and I di- I'll tell you what, when I took the week and a half off recently, it was like... I totally took a, I didn't load up YouTube once. I didn't load up social media. I literally took a week and a half absolutely away. Didn't watch any of your videos. Didn't watch anyone's videos. Sorry about that. But I actually needed to. And then when I came back, I was looking at my analytics and going, wow, what a difference that's, that's made. It d- didn't upset me or anything like that. It was re- actually really good to take that step away and have a good think about things. So, and, and mm-hmm. it, it it finally gave me, it finally knocked me in the head and, and realized that I can take a step away. I have worked my ass off for a year. And yep. it, and, and it, interestingly enough, since coming back, all those analytics have actually risen much higher to what they were over the last three months, back to kind of last year. Very interesting how that's happened. It's probably because... I'm more relaxed again. I'm refocused and reinventing yourself and taking that step away is incredibly important. And we've discussed this many times. If you're working on music and you've hit a brick wall, go do something else. Mm -hmm. Just cut it all off and go do something else. Seriously, the greatest analogy I can give, and we've all been there if you've played video games, how many times you've been stuck on a level (laughs) <laughs> and you're about to throw the controller at the fucking wall and then finally you just go, no, no more, I've had enough. You walk away, the next day you load up the exact same game and within an instant you get through that level and you just go, how the hell did that happen? Because yep. the human brain and the body and the way we're made up, we're not meant to just continually push and, and do that because it builds up unnecessary stress. It builds up a problem with our, and our brains create more chemicals and we freak the hell out. So mm. it's okay to walk away. Yeah. And in my case, literally walk away as uh, audible video saying here in the chat, like do a Pete and take a walk. It, yep. it is amazing how that actually changes your, your mindset. And I've, I've been an advocate of this back in the corporate world in particular, people would get super stressed and frazzled because they're working an eight hour day and they'd be like, Oh, I got so much to do. So they'll sit, they'll get, go to the fridge and they'll get their lunch and they'll spend two minutes and they'll come back and they'll work through their lunch. They'll be like eating their lunch while they're working. And I'll be like, all right, see ya. I'm off. And they're like, Oh, aren't you busy? I'm like flat out. Like, why are you going for a lunch break? Like, you just answered your own question. Because if I sit here and grind it out for the next five hours without going outside and getting any fresh air and getting a mental reset, I'll be working at maybe 40% efficiency. If I give myself a half an hour to go out into nature, walk around, completely switch off, I'm going to come back and I'm going to crush through the afternoon's work and get everything done in half the time. And I think we do the same thing with, with music or with whatever you're trying to do. If you're not giving yourself adequate breaks and if you're not looking after your physical and mental health and energy level, you're screwing yourself over. And I've seen it with people that study, seen it with people in the workplace, and I've seen it in music, that if you sit down for a marathon 12-hour session, by the eight-hour mark, you're working at, what, maybe 20 30% of the capacity of if you got up the next morning and did it fresh. But we just want to get it done. You're like, oh, but I just got to get this last thing done. And it's like, no, you got to think of it in terms of energy level. And the optimal energy level is not when you are so tired that you can barely keep your eyes open. Go to bed or go for a walk or re-energize. Come back. It's going to be so much better, easier, but also better. You'll get better quality of stuff done if you've actually had that rest and you've had that step away time. Totally. My two cents. And I want to let people know in this community uh, that... um, I, I want you guys to realize, understand that your self care is important too, right? Mm-hmm. Very important to, I know, to Pete, both me and Pete, and, and I'm sure other creators who are in this community. Why do I say that? Because I know we produce a lot of content here on the show, and it can be very overwhelming because there's so much that we do, right? And trust me, if, if you disappear for like, you know, a week or two or even a month, or we saw Deep Gravity, we haven't seen him here for ages, you know? As soon as you come back, 
I, I absolutely will do my best to, you know, recognize that. And, and, and I know that people need time away. I encourage you to do that. I'm not sitting here each day going, this person's not in the chat. I, I want to let you know that that is never a thing that I ever do. I never expect any of you to be here a hundred percent, but you know, so I, because uh, it's important for you guys because we're all here to make music and we are here to rise together. It's the most important thing. And, you know, we have a big month coming up um, for making <laughs> oh, yeah. music. Song temper. Rest up, folks. Seriously. So, yeah, I want you all to really, you know, take care of yourself. Put that self-care in because you guys are important to both me and Pete. I don't want to speak for you, Pete. No, you can speak for me because it's true. And, yeah, I, I do hear people. And, and I say whenever I'm doing a show, like I did a, a, a virtual busking show last week, and when I do my happy hour show, I'll always say, look, donations are always welcome but never expected. And the same goes for you showing up and being in the chat. And like but People are literally apologizing. I'm getting emails from people saying, oh, Pete, I'm really sorry. I've just been so hectic with other parts of my life. I haven't been able to be on your live shows. And whilst I miss you and I miss the usual suspects when you're unable to, to show up, I, I don't care. And that sounds bad. It's not that I don't care. It's that I, it doesn't, I know what you need to do. And I won't apologize for what, when I can and can't do that. Yeah. So just take that he out of the if you could, Jade. Pete doesn't care about yeah. any of his viewers at care. all. He ever. doesn't watch my show. He doesn't care. Trust me. I know him. He doesn't care. He doesn't no, care. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm only in it for the money. That's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm here to announce, uh, speaking of change, uh, the, the pivot to cryptocurrency. So it's going to be oh, uh, cryptocurrency <laughs> live today. Uh, our <laughs> NFTs will be our, our will be NFT Monday, and then we'll be doing Dogecoin Tuesday, and then uh, no, I don't know, I don't know enough of the. Oh, then cannabis too. That's 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 hot right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow all the trends. Uh, I don't know. You're, you're the trendsetter. You're you're, you're doing it for the kids. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was so funny. Someone. Uh, someone called me out they're just like i bet you don't even know who any of these producers and artists are in these packs and i'm like no clue but they're cool uh, i think they wanted me to go oh yeah I, I knew about track girl and take a day trip way back i've been following them for years like no nope, never heard of them but they seem cool and they make good sounds so i'm an old man i'm an old man going out yelling at clouds. i only heard of mark ronson because he produced uh, uptown funk so <laughs> that's 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 where I'm at. So, yeah. How did I know when I brought up self-care and saying, hey, it's okay to take a break from the channel. Russ was going to write, all right, I'm leaving now. Oh. <laughs> well, off you go, Russ. Off you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just don't murder anyone while you're away. <laughs> God. All right. Advice to live by. Don't murder anyone. Anyway. Yes, definitely. So we're going to end on this because it is coming up and it's exciting. It's become a thing. Uh, I don't even... It's become such a thing, Pete. You didn't even know how many years it'd been running for. I still don't really know. I thought I'd done it three years. I look back at the songs. I've only done two songs. So I think we talked about it and I kind of started it three years ago. But it, it's really only that since I did Hold On back in 2019 and uh, New Beginning in 2020, uh, which were my song. Tem I'm assuming you're talking about Song Timber uh, coming up. So, no, uh, I was, yes. I was talk talking about Movember. So November, yeah. <laughs> no, Song Timber, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, so, yeah, so Song Timber, if, you, if you're new around here or if you weren't around in September 2020, last year, we've been doing this for a few years now, and it is just an excuse to do a song in a month challenge. So the rules are there kind of are no rules, except that we want you to create and record and finish a song. I say release, but when I say release, people get a bit scared. They're like, but I don't want to release it. I don't want to put it out to Spotify and Apple Music and do the whole district thing. Release just means letting go. So yeah. you want to start a song, build it all out, record it all, and then have it. And whatever state it's in, again, release, it doesn't have to be. If it's a demo, if all you have time to do is record a demo on your voice recorder of a song that you play on your acoustic guitar or your, your piano and vocal, then great. So you, you've won. You've, you've done something. But the whole idea of it is to, as we talked about before, get out of your comfort zone and do it in a safe and um, a supportive community. So because we use the community here on YouTube, of your channels, of the Warts, of the Create, Record, Release Facebook group, there's a bunch of folks that are going to help you along the way. And I'll be I'll be here every day showing you all the struggles. And it was funny, like last year, I think it was about day four, the video title I think was why I don't like this song or why this song isn't working for me because it wasn't. 
and I had to pivot and I had to change things up. And I was going through like last September, uh, I was, I'd just been made redundant from work. So yeah. it was an interesting time for me. It was the last month that I was, I was going through this thing where they were trying to find me a new job and was I going to lose my job? Was I not going to? So the song was written around that. And if you go back and listen and see me during that time, you see that I was pretty highly strung and it came out in a very fast paced metal song that the, the second half of it was so fast that even Jade Star couldn't keep up with the drums because I think it was yeah. about 220 BPM. So uh, we had to use drummer. But yeah, it, it is interesting. Just I know that it's been an interesting year or two. So there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to be able to put into a song. And I invite everyone to participate in whatever way you can because it is uh, accessible and available for everyone. And it's a lot of fun. And I think you'll dig it. Yeah, that's the most important thing to remember, everybody. Really, it is. It is about fun. Yeah. It's, it's. 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 There's no. Um. You know. You, you've. You've got to get this out. Hey, if you're a couple of days late, that's okay too. Hey, if you're a week late. Hey, if you're a month late, that's okay too. Like. Yeah. Th- th- we all have things going on. Last year, I, I played drums on your track and stupidly did a whole EP, and I think I finished it three days late, maybe two or three days late. Didn't give a shit. This year I'm going to do um I'm going to do an EP again but mm-hmm. uh for a different band for FMC it's going to be disgusting it's going to be childish it's going to be really stupid because I need a release I need something like this this is part of this reevaluation thing I need to release and and have a a a, a song that uh you know has the title in it um wank snot sandwich I just need to do that it's it's going to make me feel good and, you know, it may offend folks, but I'm sorry because this is my outlet. So I encourage everybody to, you know, either step outside your comfort zone, do something that you're comfortable doing, whatever it is, but get involved because I think the most important thing is that we're, we're going to have fun with it. I'm going to be doing streams all through the whole month, putting myself out there, giving you the, the warts and all of everything that's going on. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do a video clip as well. Who knows if Pete, uh, whatever Pete's song he does, if he needs me to drum, I'll dive in and do that if you need that as well. And hey, we li- we're in a great community here. And if you want to reach out to somebody else, this could be a good time to collaborate as well. Mm. There's so many opportunities to do something really fun and different. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> Thomas likes wanks, not sandwich. <laughs> At least there's one person, yes. <laughs> I, I was going to go have breakfast. I'm suddenly not hungry. Funny about that. Oh, God. <laughs> now, I, now, I, now I feel bad. <laughs> I, 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 I can afford to skip a meal every now and then, Jay, just quietly. I've got about uh, 15 kgs of COVID sitting right here. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, I said the C too. word. I, I promise myself. No, you can say it on here. That's uh, yeah, it's no rules here. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I think during the um, during the song timber thing too. Not only am I going to be doing music, I'm going to try and be doing uh, creating album covers, looking at Luma Fusion still through it because people are going to be making their clips because we have YML, we have Hippies Show, we've got Garage Band uh, users indie, and Mike's new show. There's so many shows now where people are making videos, and I'm sure you're all going to be one of making videos for your song as well. So yep. it's a lot of pressure. So that's why I wanted to bring up some self-care and making sure you're okay for it because I don't want you to feel pressure. We want you to have fun. That's what this is all about. And this is Pete's thing. I'm saying we, and I'm kind of hijacking on Pete's baby here, but, you know, anyone can be in song timber. Yeah. And, and yeah, and a lot of people have, have had valid suggestions and good things they're like oh pete you should create a website for this you should you should have like a whole like separate forum that you set up and run you should add, have prizes you should have judging you should make it a competition no nah. and thank you thank Fuck you for that. all of those suggestions this isn't something that i wanted to create as like a marketing tool this is not your australian idol or your american idol or your voice or anything like that this is this is a community based thing. This is this is hopefully the giving back side. Yeah, I do a lot of that sort of stuff the rest of the year round, but Song Timber is all about you and it's all yeah. about creating this community and everyone should be able to get involved. I don't I don't want to own it. I don't want it to be extra work for me or for anyone. I just want it to be an excuse to say, Hey, guess what? If you're not regularly recording songs, if you're not creating and recording and releasing your own music, if it's your first time, your tenth time or your hundredth time, 
it'll give you a little bit of what I call positive time pressure. And it, it's not actual pressure because, again, if you don't make it, if you don't make the grade, if you don't get it done exactly on time, if it's not completely finished, if again, if it's just a, a vocal and guitar demo, that's all good. But it at least gives you some level of accountability to say, hey, I want to be involved in Song Timber. I want to be, be able to contribute my song. And guess what? You get to listen to a bunch of other people's songs, see their processes. We had other people recording videos, showing their behind the scenes processes. And I shared a lot of those throughout the month last year. So yeah, get involved, get amongst it. Uh, I think you'll have a heap of fun because that is fundamentally why we're all here. And I just want to put this out there. It's, I'm not trying to shamelessly promote, but for that month of September, remember folks, I do have a Patreon, right? Where you could even just join just for that month and just for a dollar that month and then leave at the end of the month. I don't give a shit. If you want your song mastered during that, that's what I do on the Patreon. So if you get down to that that last in that month and you want to throw a dollar my way, it's up to you. I'll be more than happy to master it on the show to help you get there. If all the pressure is built up of just making the song and you know there isn't that time to master or you're a bit scared, it's a buck. I, I, you know, And if you quit after it, I don't really care because this month of September as Pete said this is about you all about you and we're just going and it's all about Basil too Basil. Hey, <laughs> he just he just came over and started going language, man. which means which means he needs to go out so yeah. I, I didn't mean to uh, to get involved there but I gotta uh, I gotta yeah, take I the dog out otherwise he's gonna be pissing on my floor anyway he's doing now. it on so your lap I, right now <laughs> Ah, what's that's warm? It's so warm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I 100% agree. And for, for three and a half cents a day, if Jay's not worth three and a half cents a day to you, oh, then, uh, you know, what's wrong, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, so go and, uh, yeah, go and, go and join the page. Again, join, join for a month, watch all the past stuff, all the exclusive yeah. stuff, and then unjoin. We don't care. <laughs> just go for it. Yeah, it's song timber. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Pete, for being here. Thanks, Basil. Thanks, dude. <laughs> He's that so excited. Face. He's like, can I go and lift my leg on something real quick? Man, right. He looks he looks like a mop with a nose. I know. He needs a bit of a groom. He's getting a little bit shaggy. Shaggy dog. Oh, go run later. Shaggy. Sorry, it's not that kind of shaggy. Well, folks, as usual, uh, Pete's details, all his music, his channel, it's all in the description. If you don't know him by now, what the bloody hell are you doing? Um, thank you very much for supporting my channel as always. I hope um, I've got a good chance to uh, let you know and, and how I'm recalibrating the channel. And this is all about you guys. So thanks for all your support. And um, yeah, thanks for your valuable time today as always. And I will just finish with the reason I had Pete on today because um, I love Pete. He's a really great friend of mine. And when I do feel the need to recalibrate the show, I just love bring him onto the show because it really helps me steer the ship back normal i just love these shows where we get to talk shit and uh hopefully you all got something from it as per usual so yeah nice thanks one. thanks Pete. my pleasure love a good rant and thanks everyone for being here and yeah if you got if you missed it live and you've got things to say about anything we talked about it don't forget the comments are down there jade and i will be down there for the next day or two so uh yeah leave your comments there if you've got anything to say and you couldn't make it here live Yep, and press the like if you want, or press the dislike about a hundred times. Make sure it's an even number that you press the dislike whoop, whoop. number. All right, guys, take care, and uh, we'll see you probably tomorrow, won't we? Yeah, all righty. Bye-bye! See ya, see ya.